Hi, my name is Mike Olivella. I'm a professional photographer in Tallahassee, Florida. And today I'm going to show you how to build an inexpensive ring light for photography. Ring flashes are flashes that are used by uh, photographers in the high fashion kind of, for that high fashion kind of look. And they start at about four to five hundred bucks and they range on up to fifteen hundred to grand. For about fifty bucks you can build one though using fluorescent bulbs. The first thing you need to get is a Utilitech ceiling light fixture. It's a fluorescent light fixture that houses two bulbs and it runs about 21 bucks at Lowe's. You'll notice that on the outside it has a 12 inch circular fluorescent bulb and on the inside it has a 9 inch circular fluorescent bulb. We're going to make a slight modification to put out even more light and I'll show you what I mean in just a minute. That's the 12 inch bulb that you'll need. Uh, it's a GE bulb. It's it gives off 2400 lumens with a 3000 degree Kelvin color temperature so it's going to be a warm light but we can adjust our white balance to 3000 degrees so that we get a nice color balance when we shoot photos using this light now you can always buy the 9 inch bulb which is this particular bulb right here this one's made by Sylvania and I bought this one because it gave off uh, 1900 lumens which is pretty powerful for the 9 inch bulb at 3000 degrees K but I found this one at Home Depot it's an 8.6 inch bulb on the outside the, the large bulb um, so it's a little bit smaller than the 9 inch but I've already tested it and it does work on the fixture that I've bought and I'll show you what I mean in just a second but the reason I got this one is because it gives off 3300 lumens since it has two bulbs the color temperature is 3500 K instead of 3000 but that won't matter a whole lot um, and since it gives off almost twice the light of this particular 9 inch bulb uh, I thought it would be much better to try it with this particular bulb uh, since it'll give off a lot more light which is always a good thing I've unpacked the light and what it comes with is that circular fixture and the white thing in the middle is the ballast which we're going to have to remove in order to cut a hole in the center for our lens to fit through and it comes with this hardware and of course the destructions for assembly purposes we'll be using the instructions and we'll be using some of this hardware but not all of it in order to be able to fit our lens through the center we're going to have to remove the ballast and you can see this screw right there with this nut has one on this side and one over here on this side and basically we just need to unscrew these bolts in order to remove the ballast so that we can then cut a circle into the light fixture for our lens to pass through so let's do that okay the ballast is out now we'll need that for later and as you can see this also has a ground wire this is a three wire ceiling fixture so it has a ground wire since we're not going to be using the ground wire we'll take that out the ground wire is out now which basically just leaves us with the reflector from the light fixture now we just need to cut a hole in the center with a jigsaw and what I'm going to use to make my hole is a lens hood from a from a lens uh, this is about as big a lens hood as I would be passing through uh, the hole in the center so it'll be a good guide for the hole that I'm about to cut. Okay, I've now traced a hole with a sharpie or a circle around the center. You can just see the black sharpie outside the dome and now I'm going to get a jigsaw and I'm going to cut that hole out. Okay, I've cut the hole out now with a jigsaw and now I'm just going to take a file and smooth out any rough edges so that there's no chance of getting cut. The next step in the assembly is to install these clips which is what holds the light bulbs in place. And these are installed with some nuts and some screws into these locations. All six clips are now in and now it's just a matter of installing the bulbs. I've installed the bulbs. You can see the clips holding the bulbs in place. There's a hole 
in the reflector through which I've passed the wiring harnesses that come attached to the ballast. That's how you plug your bulbs in, which will eventually provide electrical power. Each bulb has a male end, four prongs, into which the harnesses plug. In order to get a good fit, you have to plug in the bulbs, and with the one in the center, since it's not a 9-inch, but rather a two-bulb uh, setup, you have to cut a notch. So I've taken a Sharpie and I've temporarily installed this and traced the outline of where I'm going to cut a notch in the back of the reflector so as to give this harness here a little more room to attach. Unfortunately the only way to determine where to cut that notch is by testing the installation of the double bulb and then lining up the harness with the plug and then making your mark where you're going to cut a notch. The notch has now been cut out. I filed down the edges to make sure there's nothing sharp and I've also rounded this off here and here so there's no chance of getting cut or accidentally cutting through the wires. Okay, this shows you how the wiring harness comes out through the notch I've cut out from the back side of the reflector and that's how it looks on the other side. Next thing we want to do is figure out where the ballast is going to attach to the back of the reflector. So once you position and move this around and find a good spot, you then have to mark the holes where you're going to drill holes in the reflector in order to be able to attach the ballast the way it was originally attached. I've now marked the holes that I'm going to drill in order to attach the ballast. The ballast is now on. I used the same hardware that originally attached the ballast to the reflector. The only thing I've added are four small washers to serve as spacers because of the difference in height on the back of the reflector. The bulbs have now been reattached after I had to take them off in order to drill those two holes for the ballast. Everything's connected up. Wires come through the hole. The harness sits in the notch. Ballast is attached. And now the only thing left to do is to wire this thing up with a cord so that we can plug it in and test it. In order to test the unit, I've grabbed an electrical cord and used two wire cap nuts to attach to the leads that come out of the ballast so that I can plug it in and test it. I'm now in the studio testing the light out. There are no lights on inside the studio with the exception of the ring light. I've set it up temporarily on a ladder which keeps it in place and I've got a mannequin with a white backdrop approximately six to eight inches behind it. You can see the halo shadow created by the ring light. The settings for the camera were ISO 400, f5.6, 1 60th of a second, and in terms of white balance, I tried three different ones, 3130, 3230, and 3450. As far as the lens goes, I was using a lens set at 105 millimeters focal length uh, and I was standing approximately six to eight feet away from the model or from the mannequin when I took the photos. Um, this basically proves that you can build a ring light for 50 bucks or thereabouts. I'm going to tweak the design a little bit so that I have a place to permanently mount it and I'm possibly going to add a reflector that goes around the edge to concentrate the light a little bit more but other than that that's a $50 ring light.